we have a brand new AWS web application firewall console experience, and it is so clean, so neat, and so useful. The first thing you start off with is protecting your resources with what we call as the protection pack. So you can think of protection pack like the bundle of AWS rules that are tailored for the application type that you have or you specify. And then once you associate your resources for protection to the protection pack, and that's where you look at the live traffic and see what's going on. So very neat dashboard. You can also do log exploration or threat analysis with AWS WAF. And then finally, if you see all the way to the right, there is a smart recommendation now. So it will look at the traffic that's hitting your site and provide you specific recommendations through the aggregated data to help you better secure your application. So fantastic now when we scroll down further you can see over here we have the protection packs and i have one specific protection pack that i have enabled and of course in this case we have wordpress but the actual workload is running on the back end it's not wordpress i just want to give it a name because this is typically used <laughs> so my workload is just a simple ec2 that has apache running as well as PHP. So what I wanna show you now is to go ahead and click onto at protection pack. And once you head over into at protection pack, this is the part where you're telling AWS web application firewall, what is your app category? And this is important because different applications require different type of defenses. So in this case, we have like content and public systems, e-commerce and so on and so forth. So content public system is going to be very different from an API or integration services. As such, the type of AWS rules that you will be placing in here from the AWS Web Application Firewall is going to be different depending on the application you have. So in this case, we're simplified that. I click on the content and publishing systems and I scroll down further. There is the app focus. Is it just application programming interfaces or does it also offer a web experience? All right, so you have the option of choosing either one. All right, so either API, web, or both. So once you're done with that, as you scroll down further, you add the resource that you want to protect. So in my case, I have a CloudFront distribution, which is AWS CDN, Content Delivery and Distribution Network. I click on the Add CloudFront or Amplify Resources. I select onto the resource I click Add. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I select onto it. Now the important part here is choose protection plan. So there is a recommended, there is essentials, there is you build it. So if you are particularly familiar with AWS Web Application Firewall rules, or you want to custom build some of the specific rules, because for example, your API only takes in HTTP get method. All right, that's one example. Then you want to discard every other methods that are hitting your endpoint. So you can develop such specific rules if you want to. So AWS WAF is hyper flexible. You can start off really simply with some of these managed rules, some of these recommended packs, essential packs, or you can go really technical too and build your own rules. So that's the hyper flexibility that comes along with AWS Web Application Firewall. Now we'll be diving deeper into each of the sub rules, which is going to be important. So now if I select onto the recommended pack, I have a rate limit for GET request. So dependent on your application, all right? So in this situation, we're setting it to 500 requests per five minutes. You can customize it later on too. So the sub rules that you see here for each of the protection pack, you can always customize them as long as you have application awareness, as long as you know what the application does, what is the expectation of the application. Likewise, we have rate limits. So in this situation, we have 100 requests per five minutes for post, put, delete requests. So generally speaking, get request is to grab the object, download the object, and so on and so forth. For post, put, delete is generally five times less of such requests. Again, highly dependent on the application. This is set on default for you. The other important rules here are like IP reputation. So this is where Amazon threat intelligence play a big role, where we are monitoring the entire internet and see what's going on. And with that, we can block out those bad IPs. So these IP addresses are scanning the website, excessively consuming resources, they are hosting malicious software and so on and so forth. So IP reputation list, it's really important. Anonymous IP list, this is the part where we are looking for potential 
requests are originating from like VPN, proxy, Tor nodes, and hosting providers. For hosting providers, if you are expecting systems or machines from data centers to be communicating with say your API, in that case, chances are you probably want to turn that specific sub rule to cow mode, which is monitoring, okay? And then you have IP DDoS protection, which is newly launched as well, and bot control protection. So bot control is where we can detect the bad bots. Maybe they are masquerading as some of the legitimate search engine optimization bots. They're hitting your site and you want to be able to block them out too. So in this situation, you want to highlight here, right? I want to highlight here is, is count mode. Count mode is monitoring. It's monitoring and seeing what's going on, all right? So you can always update this to default mode, which will block out those bad bots, okay? So likewise as well, you can look over into the different sub rules and see what you're doing. The documentation explains a lot of what's going on. Say for example, over here, I have the IP reputation rule group and this is in the documentation. So if I scroll down further, you can see the sub rules within it. So we have the AWS managed IP reputation list. So it inspects for IP addresses that have been identified as actively engaging in malicious activity. So this is from MatPod, a threat intelligence tool that Amazon uses to protect customers from cybercrime. So go ahead and read on this. So Amazon deploys all these different honeypots, monitor the activities that are occurring, and then use those bad IPs where we've identified them as doing funny stuff on the internet, and you can add them immediately to your web application firewall for protection. And likewise, reconnaissance activities, as well as IP DDoS list. So here, inspects for IP addresses that have been identified as actively engaging in DDoS activities. This is in monitoring mode. So if you want to, you can always change the rule action to block those IP addresses that are actively engaging in DDoS activities. And we covered anonymous IP least managed rule group. So if you scroll down further, there are two parts to this, right? So the first part is the anonymous IP list. So this is where they are anonymizing their client information like Tor nodes, temporary proxies, and so on. The hosting provider IP is the part where you may need to customize it. Why? Because if you are, for example, having API that is running and they are expecting some kind of communication from other machines or systems, and in that situation, they're coming from web hosting, cloud providers, and less likely from end user traffic. In that situation, you will probably want to change this to a cow so that you do not accidentally block some of this expected requests. Now, heading back over to the protection pack. Now we scroll down further, we can see the estimated costs, all right? You can expand onto that number of requests. So you're expecting 10 million requests. How much would that cost? You're expecting 100 million requests. How much would that cost? So highly dependent on your type of application, how much traffic you're expecting, okay? Then you give it a name. So in this situation, I'll call this the Hacker Alloy site, okay? Then I scroll down further and we can customize, all right? This is the part where you want to ensure that the rules and the sub rules are optimized for your application and you know your application best or you can turn them on first, see what's going on and then fine tune them over time. And of course, we also have the logging destination and so on and so forth, all right? So you can select on to say CloudWatch logs and then we can target over into AWS dash WAF dash logs dash WordPress, for example, and then I click on to add protection pack and that would work out of the box. So I've already done that. And what I'm gonna do now is head back over to resources and protection packs. I'll see under the WordPress protection pack, we can see here what's going on, right? So we have three of three rules that are active. All right, you can click onto it and can see what's going on on the right. So I'm gonna click over onto the dashboard. And from the dashboard over here, you can see the recommended rules based on your traffic insight. And I've turned on the bots traffic. So you can see here, we had four bots traffic and they were recommending me to turn it on, which I've turned it on. And then we can see all these different rules that we can enable to help better protect the site, okay? So you can see all this different vulnerable application traffic, hitting all the all these different rules that you've enabled and so on and so forth, okay? so. If I scroll down further, we have the summary, all right? So we can see the summary of total traffic 
the allow traffic, the block the traffic, capture challenge. Then we can see the protection pack activity. So we can see all of the traffic as well as any of the default action. So this is the part where we are inspecting for bad malicious traffic and we're blocking them out using like, for example, a bad IP or bot control rule and so on. So if I scroll down further, we can see the actions. We can see the chart over here, like all the traffic that's hitting our site. Okay, pretty easy to navigate. And we scroll down further, all the rules have been triggered. All right, so you can see over here, for example, we have one, all right, that is the bot control manage rule. So we've detected two of these bots using the bot control rule, which was set to count earlier. Then we have the traffic characteristics, all right? So you can select onto this, we can look at rule characteristics and so on and so forth. All right, so a lot of information that you're able to gather from there. So this is, for example, we have non-bot traffic. So when we scroll down further, we have the insight. So this part is really important if you want to dive deeper into what's going on in your traffic. So for example, I have cmd2.php, which is a URI path, and I have HTTP methods, we have posts, delete options, and so on. So in this case, for example, my website only respond to get method. And all of a sudden, people are posting, or right, a request coming to post, delete options. I wanna investigate further, I can click onto it, and then click on a view log explorer. And this is the part where we are able to pull this information from CloudWatch and you can do your diagnosis from here. You can do your task from here. You can do your threat hunting from here directly within the WAF console. This is very powerful, especially for security analysts, site engineers, where you want to optimize and fine tune your rules. So in this situation, we can see the request ID, the protection pack, the client IP and so on and so forth. So we can see that there is a HTTP method and perhaps what we want to do is to block out this IP address because this IP address is not going to our site using those expected HTTP methods. So this is one very quick way for us to investigate what is going on and then to develop maybe specific custom rules that we can place right in. Scrolling down further, we can see, for example, user agent information, labels, associated resources, JA3 fingerprint, JA4 fingerprint. So if you're doing, for example, threat hunting, likewise, you can also look out specifically for all this information that's been pulled out for you directly. So this makes it particularly easy for you to consume all this data and then to build or fine tune your web application firewall rules quickly. So what I wanna do right now is to demonstrate to you how the rule recommendation works. So I will scroll down further and I will go ahead and delete the rule that was recommended, which is the bot control rule. I'll select onto it. I'll scroll all the way down and I'll go ahead and select onto delete and I'll delete this managed rule that's been deployed. So I'll delete on this right now so that we can see the rule recommendation in action. So with that, I hit over into the dashboard and from the dashboard, all right, so you can see right here, we have the vulnerable application traffic we have the allowed bots traffic. And with that, what it's highlighting to us is that there are five of these requests that we can possibly block. So I'll select onto enable rule in cow mode. I click onto that. Now the rule is automatically enabled for us. And if you want to take it to the next level, you can head back over into the protection pack. And then from the protection pack, you can select, all right, onto, the rules that's been added for us. And you can see the highlight here, running in cow mode. So I'll select onto this over here. Okay, it says the following. So this is basically just monitoring. I select onto the rule and I scroll down further. So I'll overwrite all the rule actions to block. Okay, which is already in block. You can see, for example, like the sub rules within it, category advertising, archiver, content factor, and so on and so forth. With that, I scroll all the way down and I click save rule. So now the rule is saved and it's no longer in count mode. It's no longer just monitoring. So with that in mind, I wanna head back over to the dashboard. And from the dashboard, you can see here, we have now turned on the allowed traffic. All right, so this is going to start blocking all those bots. So you can see right here, we have now turned on the bot control and we can start blocking all this vulnerable application traffic. So if I head over into Kala Linux over here, I use the following command, which is to disguise ourselves as Googlebot. And when I hit enter on this, you can see right here, we have 
the request that is being blocked. So we managed to turn on the rule from the rule recommendation to allow us to block out this bad bot traffic. Now heading back over into the WAF console, you can see right here, we have the blocked traffic. So when I scroll down further, you can see the following. So the update to the protection pack activity, we can see right here, there's a block and this block came from the AWS managed rules, bot control rule set. So this is very clean, very neat, very easy to see what's going on. Now heading back over to the top end sites, I can scroll down further and we can see under the user agent, there is a Google bot. So when I click onto it, I view in Log Explorer and from Log Explorer, I can see right here, okay, we have the following information. So we have the action that's now block, right, from this IP address for this specific bot. So this is the information that we can get very quickly to analyze why is it getting blocked? What is the information within the request payload? And here is the part where you can begin optimizing and to help enable even further fine tuning of your AWS web application firewall rules.